Joining me on today's episode of Locked on Devils. Seth McClung. Good fastball. Has a nice 12-6 curveball. But fastball. Strike three call. Down goes Uglo. Former MLB pitcher Seth McClung and his 13-year-old daughter Madison. We're going to talk about baseball, basketball, and their love for New Jersey Devils hockey. Now, why did I mention basketball? Well, there's an interesting fact about Seth that I don't think a lot of people know about. Lots to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also a part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews, joined alongside a couple of special guests. So please welcome Big Red, a.k.a. Seth McClung. He played in the MLB for a few years with the Milwaukee Brewers and also the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and joined alongside him, is his teenage daughter, Madison, who is also a big Devils fan. I'm not sure if anyone saw the story on Twitter because Seth was able to take Madison to her first Devils game, and she got to experience the the full thing uh, at the Prudential Center. So we're going to talk about that. But first and foremost, how are you guys doing on this uh, fine afternoon? Yeah, we are great. Uh, we just dropped off Madison's friend who stayed the night, so she had a typical weekend. Madison, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for asking. No problem. So uh, let's start with let's start with you, Big Red. Um, like I just said, you played a few years in the MLB. You played with the Milwaukee Brewers. You played with the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays, as they were called at the time. So uh, just talk briefly about your uh, MLB career, because I'm sure my audience is going to kill me if I don't mention it. Well, uh, I, I played 16 years professionally with with seven of those seasons in the big leagues, uh, Tampa, Milwaukee. Um, I also played when and, and then I got hurt. So when you get hurt, you kind of bounce around a little bit. But uh, I was a guy known for throwing a fastball. Uh, I think, you know, uh, one of the, the sports shows said that I was the 37th hardest thrower of all time. So I'm going to take that because I know that's going to change. So I'm going to, I'm, you know, the older I get, the further I think I'm going to go down that line. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was blessed to play baseball a very, very long time. It's provided me, uh, all the opportunities that I have now. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, what's crazy is, is that's such a big part of my life. I, I now coach baseball and I help kids get into college. We've gotten kids over 350 scholarship offers since 2014 to play college baseball. Um, but, uh, those guys, they don't even, I'm just fat coach Seth. Like, they don't even know, like that there was even an athlete there. So, and, and to, to the girls, I'm just, you know, dumb dad. So uh, all of this baseball experience aside, uh, you know, uh, that's it's really it's it's really crazy that that the people that I love the most really don't care anything about it. Well, uh, when you play with Milwaukee Brewers, I'm a big Detroit Tigers fan. So I so growing up, I remember uh, Prince Fielder when he was on the roster. Prince Fielder also played with the Milwaukee Brewers. I just got to ask you, what was like what was it like playing with uh, Big Prince? Well, uh, since you're a Detroit fan, I'll, I'll tell you, I had uh, my rookie year I had nine strikeouts against them and one of the first games I ever played in. But playing with P is awesome. Uh, Prince is he's the kind of guy like he's super shy on camera. Like if you were to interview him, he's he's, he's not he's kind of shy. He's kind of he, he's not extroverted. But if you were to take him and you were to see how he was on the bus, I was like, this guy can host Saturday Night Live. He's hilarious. So uh, definitely an awesome teammate, somebody that I really enjoy playing with. And I actually run into him from time to time. He lives over here in uh, Windermere, which is the Orlando area. And I'm in St. Pete, which is the Tampa area. And uh, he's got a son playing travel baseball. So I coach against him. We run into him all the time. It's always good to see him. Yeah, uh, Prince Fielder was definitely a character. And you said that he's not uh, big on camera, but off camera, he has like an exuberant personality. Yeah, the guy can sing a little bit. He's funny. Uh, his his timing is good in conversation. Like he he has it all. But I've seen him on TV, and he's not. I mean, he doesn't come across as stiff. But I'm like, dude, you're funny. You should let it out. 
reminds me of a certain player on the New Jersey Devils who's not really good in interviews, but off camera, if he's playing soccer, if he's talking to his teammates, he's the one of the most lively people you'll ever see. And um, we're going to get to that momentarily. But um, before we talk about the New Jersey Devils, uh, a lot of people don't know this. You're the uncle of Matt McClung. And if that name sounds familiar, he won the uh, slam dunk contest in the NBA just a few months ago. What's it like just seeing your family member just break the internet for being a G League player and able to just dominate the slam dunk contest? It wasn't even close. So, yeah, Lisa Leslie kind of screwed that up with her one one uh, nine. But to give the full effect on what it's like for Mac McClung, I kind of got to tell you a little bit about my family. Um his father played football at Virginia Tech, which is my brother. Um, and then my other brother played football at Tusculum College. And Max's sister was actually the number one soccer player in the country coming out of high school. She ended up playing at Florida State and Tennessee. Uh, I've got another uh, nephew who is getting ready to play college baseball. Um, you know, so for us growing up into that, that sports family, um, you know, when I was actually crazy, when I was introduced to, to hockey, my, my brother, uh, my parents were both married before my brother's sisters played college hockey at Dartmouth and Cornell. And one of them actually was a, um, an alternate on the Canadian uh, Olympic team. And the other one coached in, in college hockey. So that's where I got introduced to hockey. But as far as Matt goes, our whole family is really kind of really athletically geared and Madison plays volleyball and uh, basketball as well and then my other daughter does horseback riding but we as a family really have this kind of drive for excellence and 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 it really helps that support system uh what's crazy is mac has done so well in this social media age where he was able in high school to to get on uh these platforms and have rack up millions of views and, and millions of followers in a time where it was just kind of perfect for somebody like that to come along and, and do that. And it's really, it's helped his career. And, and like I told you before, you know, if I'm not known as fat coach Seth or Madison and Fallon's dad, I, you know, screw my 16 year career. I'm Mac McClung's uncle. So that's, it's just kind of one of those things where we're so proud of, of what Mac's been able to do. We're excited. He's on the roster with the, the 76ers right now, and they got their chance to um, make their playoff run. But <clears throat> It's it's just it's it's really it's it's really great for us, but it's really good for the girls to see their family members achieve such a high level of success in an area, and they really push towards that that level of success. That is awesome. And um, as a as a Lakers fan, particularly with LeBron, I remember McClung on the roster last year. I think on the final game, and I knew what he was about. He was definitely he was definitely a social media personality, but. We've talked about baseball. We've talked about basketball. Let's talk about the main focus, which is hockey. So, Madison, I see that you're 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 repping your Jack Hughes jersey, uh, the black alternate uh, jersey, to be exact. So, uh, I got to ask you, like, uh, when did you become a Devils fan? Did you convert your da your dad into a Devils fan, or like, where did the love for New Jersey uh, start? Yeah, so last year I got pretty sick and I was just scrolling on my phone and I came across this hockey edit and it was Jack Hughes just speeding through like five players. And as I learned more about hockey, I learned that it was an unassisted goal. And after he had scored, he had this phenomenal celly and I was like, that's awesome. So I learned more about the team and I introduced my dad. And so now I'll come home from school and be like, okay, seven o'clock, the New Jersey Devils are playing. And that's just how we get together and share our love for hockey. What's crazy is when she started to like it, it seemed like every single game we were able to watch on TV, they won. So it was, it, it really kind of snowballed from that. And I got to give her, I got to give her some, some props. She actually knows for a 13 year old girl, she knows the game a little bit and she's, she's excited about when things happen. And I mean, you know, most, most kids, I, I have to explain what the offsides and the blue line and all that stuff has to go. Um, but she's got it. She's got it all figured out. She she's a fan. She's a real fan, you know, and that's for me. I was like, you don't just like it because some cute boy. And she's like, no, I like the game. Well, I think I think there's a cute, a cute man that I think she probably she that's probably what part of it. But as far as converting me, uh, I think I like the devil since uh, 1994 NHL, NHL Super Nintendo hockey. But uh, I. I I really started liking the hockey, uh, the New Jersey Devils, is when that Sports Center commercial came on with the Devil, where he's on the elevator. 
and uh, he, he gets the, the the door opens and the sports center guy goes like up or down and he, he starts to walk on and the devil goes down and he pulls off. I thought that was great. So I've, I've liked the devils for a while as far as being a casual fan. The real fan is right here, though. Real fan is right there. So. Uh, yeah, because I was I was wondering like uh, when when uh, Madison became a fan because like you said she's 13 and the last time the New Jersey Devils were super competitive in the playoffs. Uh, forgive me, my math is not all that good, but it's like you were like two or three because this was like 2012 or something like that. But um, yeah, so I got to ask you like what are some of your favorite moments during the course of the year? So you you talked about Jack Hughes is definitely taking his game to another level. He's about to. Uh, if all goes well, he's going to become the uh, single points uh, leader for the Devils all time, surpassing Patrick Eliash. Uh, Nico Heischer, he's having a career year. Vitek Vanacek has been strong in the net for the New Jersey Devils. And basically, there's been a lot of good this year, including maybe getting Timo Meyer at the trade deadline. So what are some of your favorite moments during the course of the year? I really like seeing Miles Wood get worked up. He gets pretty physical. I think that's pretty awesome and fun to watch. I also love seeing VTech. His, whoa, his goal saves are just amazing. And I just really like everything about it. I think it was pretty cool. The game we actually got to go to was against Ottawa. And that's when they clinched to go to the playoffs. So I, I thought that for us, it was kind of a special moment. Right. And you talked about special moments. So there was a tweet that you released us that's basically saying like, um, Madison was in Florida. She was supposed to see the Devils and Tampa Bay Lightning play. Unfortunately, some bad circumstances took place. So you flew her to uh you you flew her back to the East Coast and basically you got she got to see the game in person, got to get show up relatively early. So for anyone who didn't see that tweet, can you describe and take us back as to what happened? Sure. So um Madison and, and kind of had a, a a boyfriend situation where he had promised to take her to the Lightning and Devils game, and something something happened and he couldn't do it. We're not going to blame him. I think it was a pretty bad situation. He, something happened, he couldn't go. Um, so I reached out to to her mom and and I was trying to say, well, let me take her, and and I guess she was saying, well, I'll I'll take her, and so she kind of told Madison that she would take her to the game. Well. Long story short, she ended up canceling on Madison too, which kind of sucked. And so Madison's trying to watch the game on TV and and I, they've got a little one over there. Obviously her mom and I are divorced, but they got a little one over there. And I guess all hell kind of broke loose and it was loud. And, and she calls me up. She's like, you know, daddy, I can't even watch the game. She's upset. And I was just like, what can I do? What can I do? And because, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad and I just, I, I love my kids. I've actually, I've, I've really sacrificed a lot of my, my life. I didn't go back into coaching pro or college after my professional playing career was over because they were little and I wanted to be around. And so I got my daughter, she's, she's kind of, I don't want to say crying on the phone, but she's upset on the phone. And when we hung up, I was like, I got to make this right. So I, I was able to book three flights for, uh, my, myself and my both daughters, uh, my youngest one went as well. Um, and we, we flew into New Haven. Um, uh, we rented a car. We went to the city. Now, I actually told them that we were going to see Mac play. So I had completely threw them off. They, they, they thought we were going to see Mac. And you can see her face. Like, I think she kind of thought we were going to see the Devils. And then I had gotten some uh, Mac jerseys and some things like that. And they were like, okay, well – you know, whatever. So the day of the, the day we get there, the day of the game, I present her with this Jersey. And I said, uh, I said, here you go. I got you this. And, and it just was in the morning at the hotel. And she was so excited. I said, but you can't wear it today. And she's like, why? I said, because you're going to need to wear it tonight when you go to the game. And she was so happy. And for me as a dad, like uh, just to be able to, to, to give that to her was, was, uh, you know, I don't mean to get choked up, but, to be able to give that to her and make a wrong a right. Uh, and she was so excited. Her eyes were so big. We, we were the fourth people in line to get into the building. She sat down by the ice the whole time. Um, it, it, and I, I left her alone. Like, you know, I just said, go do your thing. I mean, I could see her obviously, but I said, go do your thing. And we sat up there and, and she was lucky. She ended up catching a shirt, but it, the whole moment was, it was a, a father daughter moment for me I, it, it's a moment that I will never forget it's a top moment in my life with my relationship with my daughter that's awesome and you know basically um obviously I I, I don't have any kids but uh the one thing I've learned is like you know uh 
you, you're a father first kind of thing, then you're everything else. So the fact that you did that, you you had that surprise for her and basically, uh, and, you know, cherish those memories is definitely that that's really a, a cool story to, to share. And Madison, I got to get your perspective on it. So like, you know, it was probably like the worst kept secret, I, I, I presume, because he was like, why is he flying me out here? Like, I, I have a feeling, but I don't want to make any assumptions is basically the, the 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 mindset I'm probably getting. But I just want to hear your perspective on it. Like, what was it like, you know, getting that jersey and saying and hearing that you're going to see the game live? I was so excited. Like, as you said, I knew a little bit that I might be doing this. And it really threw me off when I received the Mac jerseys. But when I received this jersey and I knew that I was going, my heart like dropped in the best way. And I was just so excited and getting there, seeing everything like with my own eyes and not just on a TV was one of the best things ever. I love just being in its presence and I got to see everyone. Like, I don't know, it was just so great. And Dougie Hamilton also came out pretty close and I was just freaking out that I was even that close to one of the New Jersey Devils players. It was just one of the best moments in my life and will forever be a phenomenal memory. She she totally fangirled out. And and for me, uh, I, I, I've always been on the other side. Um, it, it's crazy. It's really crazy to think that that at 42 years old and, and being in professional sports since I was 18 years old, like I didn't like I, I have a hard time connecting with the fan side and not not like I've always loved the fan side autographs and done all that. But like ha being able to have that moment and a bonding moment. I was sitting in the stands thinking, this is what, this is what this is all about. You know, the, the moments with, with my kid, I mean, we wanted the devils to win, but it, you know, we were so excited to see it was, it was five to three. We saw eight goals and we were able to have that moment together that, that it really was for me being an athlete going, Hey, this is why we do what we do. Absolutely. And, you know, now you see it from both worlds. You see it, the perspective of an athlete, now you see the perspective of a fan. And also not only that, you see it from the perspective of a father basically saying like, you know, now my daughter wants to meet this certain player kind of thing. And, and, you know, you've been in that situation before where it's just like, you know, sometimes you're just trying to focus on the game. You're just trying to focus, you're trying to get from point A to point B and just, you know, you're not trying to ignore the fans, but I, I think what fans don't understand. And I understand this as like a media personnel is that the players, they still have a job to do. You're like, you're in there you're in their office kind of thing. So so that's what people need to realize. A lot of times fans fans don't fully understand is the amount of effort and concentration uh, focus that goes into what we're trying to do in that moment. Um, for, for me, like my favorite part to watch uh, of, of sporting events is the warm-ups, you know, when it's a little bit lax, but you're getting ready for that moment. And and being able to combine both of those two and, and share it with, with her for real uh, is – that that to me, it, everything came full circle. Absolutely, Madison. I got to ask you. Other than Jack Hughes, who are some of your other favorite players? Uh, I really like VTech and Siegenthaler. I think they're both very physical and hardworking players. I also really enjoy seeing John Marino and Timo Meyer. I think Timo Meyer was a great like adding to the team. It was. It's great to see. She talks about Dougie Hamilton all the Dougie time. Hamilton. I can't believe she forgot. I oh, my gosh. It. He's, like, <laughs> he's such a great player. I love seeing the way he works. i like, inspired by him, really. And I'm just so grateful I got to see everyone up close. That's actually a really interesting answer that you said, John Marino and Jonas Siegenthaler, because a lot of people might just say Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, or – you know, Timo Meyer, the goal scorers, but you you said the stay at home defenseman in John Marino and Jonas Siegenthaler because what they put up uh, is not usually going to show up in the score sheet. However, it's like th that's not their job. Their job is to hold down the fort on the defensive side of things and assert themselves on the blue line. So that's actually a really uh, mature and unique answer because like because a lot of people take them for granted. So that's a uh, that's awesome. <laughs> She's a real fan. I, I I try to tell people they don't they don't sometimes they just don't they don't believe me that uh, this pretty little girl actually kind of understands a little bit of the nuances of the game. So I, I'm very proud of that answer. Yeah, but we're in a we're definitely in a new age where I, I've seen a lot of a um, lot of women cover uh, the Devils like Amanda Stein. She's appeared on my show before. Um, Christy Flannery, 
Uh, she's a writer for Devils for the Hockey Writers. And um, some of my more popular episodes is like when Christy comes on to talk uh, to talk hockey's. And, you know, she's actually and my fans always say she's very knowledgeable. She's very um, smart. And yeah, so def definitely, um, definitely I love hearing perspectives from from everyone in the, in that sort of way. So, yeah, it's def so your answers are definitely definitely unique and saying Tika Thar Marino, you understand what their role is. So my final question is playoff hockey is right around the corner. What are your expectations for the devils going into the playoffs? I think we're going to do really good. I think we just need to keep our head in the game and focus on the future. Um, I just win I'm some really home games, right? Make really. sure we win at home too. I'm just really excited to see it. Um, I've actually been talking about it a lot. I think we just need to stay focused and win. I'm like, don't worry. There's still more to talk about with Madison and Seth. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about Indeed so that way you can get on the winning team. So when you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent with Fast Indeed suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. So I told you, time is money. And if you want to make some extra money, get on the winning team with Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business so you can make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that match your must-have job requirements. So visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just head over to Indeed.com slash locked on. Once again, terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? Get on Indeed. You need it. And now... Speaking of money, I want you guys to make some extra money. So head over to FanDuel. So the NBA playoffs are almost here. Go Lakers. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three-pointers drain. So FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you're you when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, let's get back to our conversation with Madison and Seth. Take it away. I, I don't know which team you grew up rooting for, but you said you were a Devils fan since like the 90s or or that sort, sort of thing. Since Madison is a big fan, are you just like more invested into the Devils than ever? Because I saw a tweet recently where Matt McClung was playing in the G League uh, finals, but you had the you had the split screen on, focusing on the Devils and focusing on uh, on your family member play for one of the biggest games of his career so far. So if it, if it was just me on that occasion, we would have had just Mac. But she came and sat down. She's like, Daddy, can you can you tell me store score? Can you tell me score? Whatever. And I said, you know what? Let's split split screen it. Um, you know, uh, definitely I, I I enjoy watching the games. I like I said, I have her half the time because of she's with her mom the other half. And I'll find myself watching the games without her. It's it's a, something that we've really bonded on. Um you know, as, as an observer for me, I, I'm just so impressed with how fast New Jersey is. It just seems like they're faster than everybody else. And, you know, I, I've lived down here for a long time. So we've been able to see those, those the lightning teams that have won the Stanley Cups and things like that. And one of the things I always noticed was how fast they are. So as a coach myself, speed kills. Anytime you're faster than somebody else, you've got the chance to win. And, and I, I hopefully I look forward to, you know, this young team going far in the playoffs and, you know, who knows? Maybe if we could get lucky, I don't know, we can take her somewhere and catch a playoff game somewhere. Well, uh, I I definitely hope you you guys are able to go out to a few more games, and uh, I thank you for your time. So where can everybody find you, Big Red? Uh, so all of my social media stuff is at Seth underscore 3773. Um, uh, real quick, uh, the head coach over at uh, 
Rutgers uh, Newark hooked us up. I, I just wanted to say thank you to that. He gave us a parking spot so that we were able to go uh, to the games and and because I was completely lost up there. But I uh, wanted to say thank you to him. Uh, but uh, I do baseball stuff. So if anybody wants to follow me on Twitter, it's at Seth underscore thirty seven seventy three. That's all my social media accounts. You got baseball questions, holler at me, or you just want to talk, whatever. Just I'm, I'm here. I'm a very accessible former professional athlete. Yeah, that I messaged you and you and you responded uh, in a reasonable amount of time. So once again, Madison and Seth, thank you for taking the time to come on and just talk hockey and talk all other sports as well. Well, thank you guys for having us. Thank you so much. Go Devil.